Hi students and welcome to another HSC chemistry video in the acidic environment. This one is looking at mapping the periodic table. In the previous video we had a look at the non-metal oxides which we now know are acidic oxides. So when non-metals um, burn in the presence of oxygen they form non-metallic oxides and if these uh, added to water, then they can react with water to form an acidic solution. So we um, identified a couple of examples of that in the last video. Water with the addition of uh, a non-metallic oxide like carbon dioxide will form carbonic acid. And so this acid in aqueous solution um, will increase the concentration of hydrogen ions and uh, as a result uh, decrease the pH. Now another um, way of looking at that is to actually have a look at how they react with um, bases. And so we can see that um, for some of our examples, if we have something like um, an acidic oxide, which is reacting with a base, then we get a neutralization reaction. So in this case, we could have a sodium carbonate salt, uh, which will be aqueous and water forming. So a neutralization of a base with one of these acidic oxides, uh, I haven't uh, balanced that equation, um, <clears throat> but a, um, these sorts of reactions are another indicator if the base is being neutralized, that is if water is being produced, then again we can talk about the fact that this substance must be acting um, in some ways as an acid. Now, by the same token, the same sort of thing can happen when we are looking at um, other elements in the periodic table. So we've concentrated so far on the non-metallic oxides on the right-hand side of the periodic table, but over on the left are all the metals. And it shouldn't be too big of a stretch to realize that metallic oxides will do the exact opposite of the non-metallic oxides. So when we have something like sodium oxide, and it's mixed with water, then it will form a, uh, an aqueous solution. But this time, the solution will be basic, a basic solution, which means the concentration of the hydrogen ions will actually go down, uh, and therefore the pH will go up. And that's partly due to this liberation of um, hydroxide ions in this particular reaction. And just like the previous reaction, when we were looking at the combination of and uh, a non-metallic oxide um, with a base, it behaved as an acid. Here we have an acid, sulfuric acid, and if we react it with a, a metallic oxide, then again we can form water and, um, and a salt, which in this case would be copper sulfate. So you can see once again, we've neutralized the acid with our um, our basic oxide in order to form once again water. Now some substances do both. Some substances are capable of neutralizing both acids and bases and so um, we don't call them metallic or non-metallic oxides, we call them amphoteric. This is a term used to describe um, oxides which can act as either acids or bases in solution and or react with acids or bases to form um, salts and uh, water and or water. There are several metals that are capable of doing this and if you look at them in the periodic table they tend to be in that sort of region close to where the non-metals start and the metals end. So in that kind of little region. So aluminium is a very good substance um, to identify this and there's a couple of important reactions that we need to be aware of. Um, that uh, demonstrate this uh, nature. To just review, um, obviously a very large portion of the periodic table is taken up by metals and, and then um, not including the noble gases here, we will have a uh, number of uh, elements in the middle, just in that sort of stepped region, which are actually capable of acting as either. So over here, we have um, basic oxides. Over here we have acidic oxides. 
And then in the middle, kind of in this region at an angle is where our amphoteric oxides are. So just a few little um, trends then, just to finish off this video. Um, that gradual transition occurs from basic oxides to acidic oxides, from the lower left to the upper right of the periodic table. The basicity of the oxides increases with increasing atomic number. So as we go down a group, um, then the basicity increases, basic nature increases. Um, and also, um, there is some relationship between acidity and oxidation state, and that was something that we talked about in the production of materials topic when we were um, looking at displacement reactions in galvanic cells. And acidity also increases with increasing oxidation state. Now, I haven't had much of a look at the equations for something like aluminium oxide and how it behaves as an amphoteric oxide, and we're going to look at that in class. Thanks for watching.